Okay, we're back. From our last lesson video, we discussed the law of signs. Now, we will continue this lesson with part 2, which is the law of cosines. So, we left our last video here. From here. So, this time, now we will discuss the law of cosines. Same triangle that we had from love signs. We are going to derive the formula for the law of cosines. When we draw a line perpendicular to our base C, which serves as the height of the triangle, we can create two different triangles. Triangle ABC, where the right angle is at D, and triangle BDC, where the right angle is still at B. Okay, the length of AD in this triangle will be represented as X. And the length of DB will definitely be C minus X. Because the length of the whole base AB or whole side AB is C. So, DB will become C minus X. If you remember, the Pythagorean theorem says that the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the square of the sum of the bases. Okay, so in this example, for the triangle ABC, our C here or our hypotenuse is B. So this, this will become B squared and the altitude is our height or H and our base is X h squared, so when we isolate the height, we're going to have h squared equal to b squared minus x squared. For triangle c, d, b, or triangle b, d, c, for triangle b, d, c, our hypotenuse is a, so this will become a squared equals our Altitude is still h, so h, squa h squared, and our base is c minus x. So c, oh, e plus rather, c minus x squared. Now when we need to get the length of h, or the value of h squared, we're going to have a squared minus c minus x squared. Okay, now we have here on triangle ADB, H squared is equal to B squared minus X squared. While on triangle BDC, H squared is equal to A squared minus quantity C minus X squared. Okay, using transitivity, we can say that B squared minus X squared is equal to A squared minus quantity C minus X squared. When solving for this one, we are going to have B squared minus X squared is equal to A squared minus. Now, when we expand C minus X squared, we're going to have C squared minus 2CX plus X squared. Okay, let us simplify. We're going to have B squared minus X squared equals A squared minus C squared plus 2CX minus X squared. Now, when we solve for A, we're going to add the inverse of all the terms aside from A squared. So, we're going to have a squared, okay, this would still be B squared minus X squared. So the additive inverse of negative C squared will be plus C squared, then minus 2CX plus X squared. Now let us combine the similar terms. We have here negative X squared and positive X squared giving us 0. Therefore, a squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 
x. Okay, so we have a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2 c x. So how are we going to find x? X is, an, x is adjacent to angle alpha. Okay, pertaining to triangle A, B, C. So if x is adjacent to angle alpha, we can use cosine, the cosine function because cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we can say that cosine alpha is equal to the adjacent side, which is x, and the hypotenuse, which is B. Okay, so cosine alpha is equal to x divided by B. And since we only need to get x, we have to multiply both sides by b. So this will become b times cosine alpha, and we can divide out b here, leaving us with x. Therefore, x is equal to b times cosine alpha. And when we substitute b, Cosine alpha to x here in our solution, we have a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2cb cosine alpha or a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine alpha. Okay, so in this solution, where a squared is the side opposite angle alpha, b squared is the side adjacent to angle alpha, c squared is the other side adjacent to angle alpha, we can say that our formula can be written as side opposite the reference angle squared is equal to the side adjacent to the reference angle squared and the other side adjacent to the reference angle squared minus 2 times one adjacent side times the other adjacent side and times cosine of the reference angle. Okay, so if our reference angle is beta, the side opposite beta is B giving us b squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine beta. And if our reference angle is gamma, our formula will be c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2bc cosine gamma. So for example, now... For example, number three, let us solve this triangle using the law of cosines. Um, so in this example, first let us name our parts. So since this is corner A, let us name this as angle alpha. This is corner B, so this will be angle beta, and this will become our angle gamma. And the side opposite alpha will be our A. The side opposite beta is our B, and the side opposite gamma is C. Okay, so for this triangle, we have to find the measure of C, the measure of angle alpha, and the measure of angle beta. So first, let us solve for C. So we can get our angles later. So we know that C squared is equal to a squared plus B squared. Since this is C squared, we are not going to square it on the other side. So that will be A squared plus B squared minus 2 times these two angles, A, B. Because we do not know C, we are looking for C. So we will not include C in this solution. Okay, so A squared plus B squared minus 2AB times cosine and what is the angle opposite c the angle opposite c is gamma so we have cosine gamma okay so we only need c 
so we have to get the square root of both sides. So C is equal to the square root of A squared. A is 6.01. So 6.01 squared minus B squared. B is 14.65. 14.65 squared minus 2, oh, this is plus rather, 2 times the product of A and B, so 2 times 6.01 times 14.65, is 14.65 times the cosine of cosine of gamma, which is 77.94 degrees. So we extend our radical. We can now get the value of C using our calculator. So C is equal to the square root of 6.01 squared. Side C measures 14.62704523 and to round it off to two decimal places, we can write it as 14.63. Since we are working with law of cosine, let's uh, just use this. Okay, so let's just find alpha. And, and alpha works when we are solving for A. So A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BX cosine alpha. Alpha is opposite A. So how are we going to work on this one? To work on this one, we have to isolate. Okay, so we can put this on the other side. So by adding the additive inverse of negative 2bx cosine alpha, so we're going to have 2 positive 2bx cosine alpha equals b squared plus c squared minus a squared. Since we only need why is this x? This should be c. It's not x. This should be c. Okay, so we have b squared plus c squared minus a squared is equal to 2bc cosine alpha. Then we only need alpha, so we have to divide both sides by C. So that we can divide this out. We only have cosine alpha equals B squared plus C squared minus A squared all over B C. And since we only need alpha, B 
we are going to have cosine, which is arc cosine or cosine raised to negative 1. So, alpha is equal to arc cosine b squared plus c squared minus a squared all over b c. Okay, so using our calculator, we can get the value of alpha. So our cosine is shift cosine b squared. Our b is 14.65 times 14.65 squared plus c squared c is 14.63. 14.63 squared minus a squared. a squared is 6.01 squared. And divided by 2bc, so it's 2 times b. b is 14.65 times c. c is 14.63. So we have alpha to be 23.6892.6059. To round it off to two decimal places, it's going to be 23.69. How, how, now, how are we going to find beta? So since we know alpha and gamma, beta will be equal to 180 minus the sum of alpha and gamma. Beta is 180 minus the sum of alpha, which is 23.69, and gamma, which is 77.94. So we have 78.37. Beta equals 78. Can we also use the law of sine in finding the measure of the angles? Yes, we can also use the law of sine. So when we use the law of sine here, since we have, we are looking for alpha, so we are going to have sine alpha divided by A is equal to sine gamma divided by C. So sine alpha is equal to A sine gamma over C. And since we are only looking for alpha, the arc sine. So alpha is equal to arc sine A times sine gamma divided by C. So let us see if we are going to get the same answer as was as what we have when we did it with love cosine only. So Let's get using arc sine. So arc sine is shift sine of A, which is 6.01 6.01 times sine gamma. Sine gamma. So sine gamma is sine 77.94. Divided by C, which is 14.63. Hopefully, we get the same answer. Yes, we get the same answer, 23.69. So, we can use either the law of sine here for the last part, since we already have one angle and all the other sides. 
A, let us now move to the next triangle. Okay, so let us now see in GeoGebra if our solution is correct. If we get the same measurements in GeoGebra. So, in our solution, the values that we got are the same as the values that it shows in GeoGebra. So, let us now move to our next triangle. This will be our last triangle for this lesson. Okay, so for our last triangle, we have the following. So, opposite alpha is A. The measure is 8.14. Opposite beta is our B, which measures 14.43. And opposite gamma is our C, which measures 9.19. We know that the side opposite the largest angle is the longest side. So here, our largest angle should be beta because the longest side is B. Okay, so let's just get the value of beta first since, it's, since it is the largest. So since we will be working with beta, we will work with the formula for B because it is the side opposite beta. So we're going to have B squared is equal to okay, the two other sides. We have to get the sum of their square. A squared plus C squared minus 2 times the product of A and C and cosine beta. We will only need to get beta, so let's isolate by adding the additive inverse, so that additive inverse is 2AC times cosine beta to both sides. This is what we do when we are transposing or actually adding the additive inverse. And to isolate, to move B squared to the other side, we also have to add its additive inverse. So minus B squared. Here also we subtract B squared. So B squared will be 0. We have 2AC cosine beta equal A squared plus C squared minus B squared. And since we only need to work with beta, we have to isolate again cosine beta by dividing both sides by 2AC. So cosine beta is equal to A squared plus C squared minus B squared all over 2AC. Again, we only need beta, so we have to isolate beta but by getting the arc cosine. Arc cosine is the inverse trigonometric function of cosine. So cosine and arc cosine we will, will only leave us with beta. So beta is equal to the arc cosine of A squared plus C squared minus B squared all over 2AC. Okay, you might probably ask, can we use law of sines since law of sines is easier than the law of cosines? No, because there is no angle that is given. So since no angle is given, we have to use the law of cosines. Okay, now we are ready to solve for beta. So arc cosine, so this will be shift cosine. A squared, so our A here is 8.14. Let's just put decimal, uh, let's put parenthesis. 8.14 squared plus B, I see squared is 9.9. B squared, which is 
just point to point, point three. divided by the product of A and C. So this will become 2 times A, which is 8.14, times C, which is 9.90. Okay, so here we have 112.6056196. When we round it off to decimal places, this will become 112.61. So, beta is 112.61. Now, we can get either alpha or gamma by either law of cosine or law of sine. So, why can we now use the law of sine? We can now use the law of sine because we already have one angle that is even and its opposite side is also given so we can now use the law of signs okay so let's use the law of signs for this example or we can also use again the law of cosines so gamma is opposite side c okay so using law of, law of sign we're going to have sine beta over b is equal to sine gamma over c. And we only need gamma, so we multiply both. Okay, so we multiply both sides by c or we cross multiply. So we have c times sine beta over b is equal to sine gamma. We only need gamma arc sine. So gamma is equal to arc sine of C sine beta over B. Using our, now using our calculator, let us solve for gamma. Gamma should be bigger than alpha because side C is longer than side A. So we have shift sign for arc sign times C. C is 9.19. 9.19 times sine beta. Beta is 112.61 degrees all over B. B is 14.43. So we have 36.009, or 36.01. Now we only need to get alpha. To get alpha, so alpha here will be the difference between 180 and the sum of beta and gamma. So we know that Alpha should be the smallest angle because A is the shortest side. So alpha is equal to 180 minus beta plus gamma. So again, let's use our calculator to make it easier. So 180 minus beta is 112.61. Plus gamma, which is 36.01. Okay, we have 31.38. True enough, alpha is the smallest of the three angles. So let us see in GeoGebra if our... Now let us see in GeoGebra if the measure of the angles are the same as our solution. So 
there's a slight difference in our solution and with the solution and with the answer in GeneGebra only because as we rounded off to two decimal places when we solve. So this will be the last example for this lesson. So before we end, how are we going to know which law to use? Is it the law of sines or the law of cosines? We can use the law of sines if our triangles has the following event. One side and two angles. Okay, how are we going to use the law of sine? We can get the measure of the third angle by subtracting the sum of the two even angles from 180 degrees. And if two sides and an angle opposite one of the given sides are given. Otherwise, we will use the law of cosine. Okay, when can we use the law of cosine? If two sides and the included angle are given, so that means SAS, side, the angle that is sandwiched between the two of them and the other side. And if three sides are given, like the fourth example that we had. Okay, so this will be all for this lesson video. In our next video, we are going to answer the following. Solve for the unknown in the given triangles. Number one, if beta is 75 degrees, gamma is 30 degrees, and C is equal to 5. Number two, A is 4, B is 5, and gamma is 50 degrees. Number three, B is 23, C is 35, and alpha is 120 degrees. And number four, Alpha is 115 degrees, beta is 13 degrees, and A is equal to 26.3. Okay, so thank you for watching this math lesson video on law of cosines and law of sines. See you on our next lesson video where we answer the practice activity from this lesson video. So as always, thank you, keep safe, and stay healthy. See you soon.